All right, evil internet service providers. I've been thinking about how we're going to torture Drew. He's been paying us already for years, over $100 a month. <laughs> Good. Excellent. Good. That's genius. And our brand, Xfinity, is just going to continue raising our prices higher and higher every month until he goes to one of you guys. Perfect, Xfinity. I think this will work. And if you don't mind, T-Mobile, I'd actually prefer if I could start torturing him next. Please, by all means, go ahead. I mean, he hates 5G as is, so he's not going to flock my way, at least at first. Exactly. He loves SpaceX, so let's give him a little bit of hope and make him think Starlink is actually going to work. That was my thoughts as well. I thought I'd start off with kind of okay speeds, and then as the year goes on, I would get better and better and a lot more <laughs> Stable. Yes. Yes. Right. yes. And then, right as he's about to drop his one year later review, <laughs> I suddenly get way super unreliable, and now live streaming becomes impossible. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> That's a. Uh... Honestly, kind of what I had in mind. Oh, really? You wanted to do the whole, uh, you know, fast speed and then nothing afterwards thing? Yeah, I mean, giving him the whole glimmer of hope thing kind of sounded cool. So. No, yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I definitely don't have a patent on the idea or concept, but I, I was happy to kind of inspire you. I think sake. you shouldn't wait as long, though. I mean, after a few weeks, just take it away, and I mean really take away his internet so he has nothing left. I could... Yeah, but why not wait longer like Starlink did? Because you're the cheapest provider. We don't want him to save that much money for too long. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> see, yeah. see, we got to make him miserable so that he actually wants to come back to us. <laughs> 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 but you're not going to take him back, right? Oh, you no. Won't. No, I'm going to tell him we're at capacity in his area. He can't get fiber. He can't get Verizon Fios. Nothing. I Nothing's can't, out I here. I can't. I can't stop. Oh, no. <laughs> Let's begin. It all started on April 24th that evening. My wife and I were trying to enjoy the last bit of our weekend by watching a movie on the TV, and it suddenly started buffering. We had a pretty strong couple of months with T-Mobile Home Internet. You know, the speeds were faster than I had gotten, at least in terms of upload, than both on Starlink and Comcast. I've been doing lots of live streaming, both for the public and for the channel members. Been uploading lots of videos, watching a lot of YouTube, streaming music, using my security cameras and what have you. Everything was all fine and dandy until I realized the internet was out, which I thought was weird considering my phone was working fine, which was on Mint Mobile, which basically uses T-Mobile Towers. So I thought, this is weird. This is a little confusing, but eh, it was kind of late at night anyway. We just kind of finished off the show using my phone's cellular data, and then we went to bed, and I hoped, well, that was kind of weird. Hopefully it'll be better in the morning. Unfortunately, it was not, and Monday's typically a full work day for me, so I was a bit concerned and a little bit confused as to why, even after un plugging and plugging back in and, you know, factory resetting my T-Mobile gateway, why is the Wi-Fi not working? You know, this is kind of a long outage for it to last all overnight. Comcast would occasionally have outages, and so would Starlink, but usually never more than a few hours, so the fact that it had lasted all night was a bit concerning, so I got T-Mobile on the phone. It took about 30 minutes before I was actually patched into someone, but I asked, hey, I don't have Wi-Fi, what's the deal? And their response was kind of weird. They said, oh, actually, there's maintenance going on in the area, and and that maintenance will last until April 30th. So I was a little ticked off by this, right? I was like, okay, you scheduled maintenance for five days and you didn't want to tell me about this, especially nowadays when people rely on home internet for work and for their jobs and their livelihoods. You didn't want to at least send me a warning or something like, hey, by the way, uh, the service is not working properly. So I thought, huh, okay, well, I guess I'll just keep going off of my phone's hotspot. So that's what I did for a while. Pretty much all the content you guys saw posted last week was all uploaded via cellular data, which again, I thought was weird because my phone is still using the T-Mobile towers. And when I was on the phone with customer service, I was like, is something wrong with my hardware? Do I need a new gateway? And they encouraged me several times. They were like, no, 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 nothing's wrong with your hardware. Nothing's wrong with the gateway. There's just service and maintenance going on in your area, despite my phone working 
perfectly fine. So I didn't know if the maintenance was going to directly be impacting me until the 30th, so I continued on until April 27th, which is when my mobile data started running out on my Mint mobile plan, which normally is never a problem for me because I typically don't use that much hotspot data or even data off my phone, and I was beginning to run out. And once I run out of data on my phone, I was like, okay, I don't know what I'm going to use in terms of Wi-Fi, and I found this a little bit ridiculous considering even with Comcast and Starlink, I never once had like three day outages, which I thought was absurd. And you quickly can realize how bored you can become when you don't have cellular data on your phone or Wi-Fi to work with. It's like we were living like cavemen. We had to go read books or some weird stuff like that. Anyway, I called them again on Wednesday and I said, hey, this is kind of absurd. What am I paying for here if I'm not getting internet service and it's costing me money? Like this is my job, this is my livelihood and the cellular service still works on my phone. So again, is this the gateway at fault? Once again, they said, no, 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 nothing's wrong with the gateway. Don't worry, the maintenance will be done by May 9th. This is when my ears perked up a bit on the phone. I was like, wait a minute. Now you're telling me that the cell towers in my area are gonna be serviced for almost another two weeks? This was becoming unacceptable for me. So I was like, look, I don't think I can justify this service if you're gonna take like multi-week outages and not tell me about it in the future. And I kept asking like, how often of a thing is this gonna be? They never wanted to tell me how often or how scheduled this maintenance was, but they said, hold on, we'll refresh your gateway and we'll connect it to a different tower. So I unplugged it, plugged it back in, and the Wi-Fi started working again, which was just enough for us to catch up on some of those movies and shows we were missing, thankfully, because my cell data was almost out on my phone, but it was not great. The speeds were substantially slower, they were not getting over 100 megabits down, and it was inconsistent. It was not a stable enough Wi-Fi signal to live stream off of because the internet would cut out about every 20 minutes for around five minutes, which was very frustrating when watching certain shows that it had to start buffering, and then you wait a little while, and then it catches up again. Definitely not stable enough to live stream with, so in case some of you are wondering, why hasn't Drew been live in a while? This is why. But because I've been sick for the past week, I've just been like, eh, maybe it's a sign from God I should not be live streaming because my throat feels terrible. But then May 1st rolled around, and the internet was still not fixed, so I called them once again and said, hey, you know, one of you guys claimed that the maintenance in my area would be done by April 30th. It is now past April 30th, so, you know, I was assuming the second guy who claimed the internet would be out until May 9th was probably correct at this point. So I called for the third time. Again, had to wait like 30 minutes before I could connect to anybody, but then they basically said, no, there's no maintenance in your area at all. All the towers are working normally. There's no problem whatsoever. So if there's an issue with your gateway, try unplugging it and plugging it back in. I had already done this a million times, but I did it again on the phone. They told me to remove the SIM card and put it back in. I tried to, and that's when they discovered something is probably wrong with my gateway because I know how to take out SIM cards. I've done this before and it's supposed to be a very simple push and eject feature and whatever that easy push and eject mode is was not working on mine. It didn't matter how many times I pushed it or how hard I pushed it or what angle I pushed the SIM, it would not pop out. So finally, after three calls, they said, okay, maybe you have a hardware defect with your gateway. We're gonna go ahead and send you a new one. So I was trying trying to ask lots of questions on the phone like did I do something wrong with my gateway am I using too much internet in my live streaming or uploading too much did I fry my unit like what can I do in the future to avoid this type of outage from happening again and they assured me on the phone that no I did nothing wrong I did not use too much internet they just said it's a manufacturer defect and they would take my defective unit and ship me out a new one and I would just have to call them plug that one in and hopefully that would fix all of my problems now two t -Mobile Mobile's credit, because of all these issues, they have agreed to not charge me for the month of May. So I applaud them for acknowledging their mistake and realizing like, hey, if we're not delivering on our service, then we're not going to charge you for it. So thank you, T-Mobile, for that. I appreciate it. And since May 1st, the Wi-Fi again has been on and off, you know, not stable enough to live stream, and it still will interrupt my uploads time and time again, which is quite annoying. When you're in the middle of an upload and the internet goes out, YouTube doesn't know what to do with it, and it freaks out. So that 
that slows down my workflow. It slows down how long it takes to upload videos. And of course, makes our security systems not work at the house, which is a bit concerning. But still, hey, thank you for not charging me in the month of May. I appreciate that. So as of today, I have now received my replacement T-Mobile gateway. I'm gonna plug it in, call them, and see if it's more stable. So I was on the phone with T-Mobile for about 40 minutes getting everything transferred over to the new gateway, to the new account, and they made sure the SIM card eject function worked perfectly. On the first try I pushed in, it came out right away. I read him the number on the SIM, I plugged it in, got it all signed up with my original T-Mobile account, got my devices hooked up to it. Did it finally fix all of those T-Mobile instability issues? <sighs> Unfortunately, it did not. I immediately went into live stream testing, and by the way, this was on Ethernet, okay? This was not just on Wi-Fi, and I'm still running into several complete dropouts when it comes to the upload performance within a 20-minute stream test. Three, four different occasions where the connection is completely lost and disconnected for about a minute, which would absolutely interrupt and disrupt the flow of conversation on my live stream, so it's not stable enough for that, but what I will say is on the right side, after all this T-Mobile maintenance going on with the cell towers, I am noticing substantially faster download speeds. Not that I care much about download, but I'm now consistently seeing speeds over 400, even tapping 500 megabits per second a couple of times, again on Ethernet, not over Wi-Fi. And before, over Ethernet, it would maybe get over 300, but most of the time sit around 200. Now seeing it consistently beat 400 is cool, and I guess important for likely most T-Mobile customers out there, but the whole reason I went with T-Mobile over Starlink was because upload stability and speed is what mattered the most to me as a live streamer and as a content creator. And now with these new download speeds being great, I'm seeing slower upload speeds. So before I would get like 30, 40, sometimes 50 megabits per second upload with T-Mobile. Now it's hardly ever breaking 20 megabits upload. So that impacts me directly. And of course, with these live stream tests, it's clearly not as stable as it used to be. You know, I was live streaming every single day with T-Mobile for the past two months up until I started having these outages. Now they give me new hardware and they claim there's no maintenance going on and yet the upload is still not stable enough to maintain a live stream and I assume probably not even a FaceTime call. And before you ask, yes, I did reach out to Starlink. I asked if they would take me back. They said they're at capacity in my area so I can't even go back to Starlink if I wanted to. Not to mention that's over twice the price of T-Mobile Home Internet now at 110 bucks a month. But yeah, Dishy McFlatface is still sitting up there on the roof. Hopefully they one day allow me to reactivate it. But this whole disappointing rant basically ends with me asking you guys, what do you think I should do? Should I just have bumpier live streams that are filled with lag and disconnections throughout? Should I just not do live streams at all? That would be sad because I love doing live streams. Or should I cave and go back to the infinitely expensive and contract riddled Xfinity after trying all of these different alternatives and trying to make a point about monopolies and how terrible Comcast had treated me that I didn't want to reward them with my service anymore. After all these attempts at trying to move away from them, should I just go back because maybe they're the only ones that can let me live stream with a stable connection, even if it ends up costing me more? I don't know. I'm torn on this one and I'm frankly quite depressed after trying all these different providers and not really being happy with any of them. I mean, just to get over 20 megabits upload on Comcast, you gotta spend 110 bucks a month and then that's not unlimited data. So that adds in another 30 bucks a month extra. So with all of their additional fees and stuff, it ends up costing like $150 a month to be on Comcast, which is ridiculous. No, there's no fiber in my area. No, there's no Verizon Fios. So I'm just kind of bummed right now. I, I don't know how I feel about it. I guess T-Mobile's probably prioritizing the thing that most people care about, which is download, but I guess I'm the weirdo on this one that would just prefer faster upload. I wish there was a specific tier I could request that was like, hey, give me like 100 megabits down. You don't have to give me any more than that. But just give me at least, you know, 40, 50 megabits up and make it as stable as possible. I'll keep trying. I'll keep testing things. I'll keep restarting and unplugging. But the future of internet is uh, pretty bleak for me at the moment. All your ideas, feel free to let me know what you're thinking down in the comments below. This is your Apple Sheep here. I'll see you in the next one.